Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're creating abstract spheres in Cinema 4D. Okay, let's get straight into it. We're making spheres, so let's start by bringing one of those in. We'll come up here, and there he is. If you plan on doing some nice texturing, you probably don't wanna use the standard sphere, and I'll show you why. If we come up to our display settings and turn the lines on, you can see the lines in the middle are fairly evenly distributed. But if you look at the top, they're pretty tiny and you're gonna get some pinching when you go to do texturing. And we don't want pinching. But if you come down here to the object tab, we can change that type from standard to icosahedron. And if we have a look over here, we've got triangles, but everything is looking a lot more even. So our texture maps are gonna wrap around that very nicely. Right, our sphere is pretty massive. It's currently a meter wide. We're gonna be using dynamics on this, so it's always a good idea to work at actual scale. Let's say in real life, our sphere would be about 10 centimeters. Let's put that in. And now we need a way to emit loads of these spheres. I think the best way is probably to come up to simulate, down to particles, and we'll grab an emitter. Okay, if we come down and hit play, got some particles shooting off in that direction. We'll just stop that. We wanna tell the emitter to put our sphere on each one of these particles. So let's go up and grab our sphere and drag it here so it becomes a child of our emitter. And we'll click on that emitter. And one more step, we'll hit show objects and render instances. And you can see that's working. And we'll go back to the start and hit play. And now the emitter is spawning our spheres but we don't want them all going in that direction. We want them shooting off everywhere. So under the emitter tab, we'll come down to these angle settings. Let's bring the horizontal up to 360 degrees. And that's shooting things off in both directions there. We're getting close. We still need them to go up and down. And it's as easy as changing that vertical angle to 180 degrees. Cool. I think we could probably do with a few more spheres. Let's go to the particle tab and we'll change the birth rate editor and renderer. We'll bring that up to 100 each. And now we've got loads more. So it's probably time to start making these dynamic. Let's come up to tags and down to simulation tags. We'll bring in a rigid body. And if we apply that to the emitter, like we've done here and hit play, you'll see it just drops down and is totally not what we want. But if we move that tag to the sphere itself, we're getting the effect that we want but this setup might be a little bit limiting. We wanna be able to control these with MoGraph effectors. So the best way to do this is to first come up to MoGraph and grab a cloner effector. Then we'll go over here and grab our sphere. Let's make it a child of the cloner instead. Then we can grab our cloner and come down to the object tab. Let's change the mode to object and we can use our emitter as the object. So let's drag that into the object section here. Then we'll grab our dynamics tag and put that on the cloner and let's try playing that. It's treating all of our clones as one object, so we just have to remember to come back up to our Dynamics tag, and over in the Collision tab, we need to change individual elements to top level, and we'll play that back. Nice. Okay, that's pretty much the same setup we had before, but doing it this way is gonna give us a lot more control than if we just use the emitter. If we grab our cloner and come to MoGraph, we can actually add effectors to this. We're gonna go with a random effector. Let's go down here and have a look at the parameters tab. We'll switch that position off. We just want it to affect the scale. Let's turn on uniform scale and we'll set the scale value to negative 0.5. Okay, let's play that back. And you can see our spheres are all different sizes now. That'll make it look a little bit more interesting. Let's play that back again. The next issue we wanna deal with is the gravity. We don't want all of these spheres falling down. We want them to keep piling up and make another sphere shape. So let's hit Control D and bring up our project settings. Then over in the Dynamics tab, we'll come down to where it says gravity. A thousand centimeters is normal gravity, but if we bring that down to maybe one centimeter, and play that back, our spheres just carry on floating out to space after they've been emitted, which is close to what we want, but not quite. We don't want them to go too far away. So the first thing we could probably do is go back to the emitter and under the particle tab, we'll come and bring that speed way down to something like one centimeter. 
Okay, they're moving a bit slower, but they're still going a bit too far. So what do we do to get them to stay in the same area? I played around with this a lot, and a solution I came up with is over here in the Dynamics tag. If we go to the Force tab, you'll see this Follow Position. If we put a 1 in there and play that back, we get this cool clustering effect. And the only issue now is that they're not clustering in a sphere shape. There's not many going out to the left and right here. And if we go back to the beginning, you'll see why. Here's our emitter, and you can see the shape is pretty much just vertical. If we can make everything emit from a single point, I think this should work for us. So we'll go back to our emitter, and over under the emitter tab, you can see our X and Y size is pretty big. Let's bring those down to again one centimeter. So they'll just emit from this tiny point here. We'll hit play. And there you go, job done. And you can see they're all interacting with each other and it's looking pretty cool. Don't forget to cast your animation before you hit render. You can find that down here in the dynamics tag. Just hit bake object. And you might also want to come up to tags and down to MoGraph tags and add a MoGraph cache tag and bake that as well. Just make sure it's on the cloner and not the emitter. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'd love to see what you guys create with this technique, so please feel free to share it on our Facebook group. As usual, if you want to download the project file, there's a link below to save you a bit of time. And you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.